Welcome to Podcasters Roundtable Round 5 Podcasting Pet Peeves. We have a large panel of podcasters on tonight's episode, which is really cool because this is not only the largest one we've done yet so far, but allows me to bring in a whole bunch of new people, which we will meet here in a second. Tonight, we are talking about, again, podcasting pet peeves, those things that you hear on other podcasts or you see on their websites or anything you run into related to someone's podcast that just bug you, just want to reach out and say, please stop that. You know, and maybe, maybe you don't want to do that. Maybe you feel it's rude. We're going to air those tonight, but with solutions, right? It's not going to just be a bunch of whiny podcasters. We're actually going to tackle the problem, then get a solution for that problem. And I want to thank Daniel J. Lewis, who you will meet in a second. And if you've been watching, you know him. He came up with this topic, and I think it's a great one. It doesn't require any of the panels to have specific knowledge. All you have to do is listen to podcasts. And this might be mistakes that we're even made on our own shows, okay? So we get to learn. And so with the Podcasters Roundtable, uh, I tried to boil it down to you know, almost like three-word tagline, and that's teaching through discussion. And that's what we're doing tonight. So we're going to continue with that, and we're going to meet the panelists now starting on what is my far left. And we're going to we're going to – Jump in here, and we're going to say hi to Corey. Corey, introduce yourself and your website and podcast. Hello. I'm uh, Corey Tibbetts from the End Credits podcast. Uh, we're a podcast that talks to people behind the scenes of any type of media, be it film, TV, web series, other podcasts. Uh, we're just trying to talk to people that don't usually get uh, any airtime. Cool. All right. Welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. First time podcast yeah. roundtabler, which will get you little red dots <laughs> and a spell check, but I'm saying roundtable. Thank you. Next up, <laughs> Daniel, one of the Daniels, the one next in line, Daniel Clark. Hey, Daniel M. Clark, QAQN.com. I have a couple of podcasts there. I'm focusing mainly on geeky pop culture, science fiction-y type stuff, and one about uh, affiliate marketing. So I'm glad to be here. Thanks. Awesome. Welcome, Daniel J. I'm Daniel J. Lewis. I host the Audacity to Podcast and several other podcasts. I've been podcasting for now about three years, and I've been listening to podcasts since about since they started. All right. Awesome. Welcome, Daniel. Welcome back. Daniel's basically a co-host here, so uh, he helps me do this show, and I appreciate it. And again, mastermind of the topic tonight. So we're going to dig into podcasting pet peeves. And the next one is just Jason. I'm going to let him say his last name so that I actually get it right. And <laughs> I also want to say it's awesome to see him in person because Jason's like a power member of my forums, which, you know, we don't have, you know, it's not like it's a ton of traffic over there. But the point is, if you ask a question, if I'm not answering it, Jason's answering it. And we, I appreciate that. And first time I get to meet him in person. So Jason, introduce yourself. All right. Hey, uh, thanks, Ray. And uh, it's great to finally see you face to face virtually. But uh, yes, uh, I run the CreeperCast podcast, uh, the CreeperCast horror podcast, uh, anything and everything horror and AMC's The Walking Dead Week in Review. And uh, we are coming up on our 100th episode, this very next episode. So we're excited there. Awesome, Jason. Thanks a lot. And Daniel J, I'm going to let you take over while I embed the live video onto the webpage that's finished the introductions. And, and make sure you get uh, Martine and where she's coming from. Yeah, Martine, tell us about yourself and uh, the podcast that you host or your experience with podcasts. Hello, gentlemen. Lovely to meet you all. Um, I'm Martine, and I'm coming to you from Guernsey, and I run the I Make podcast, which is a creative lifestyle podcast. So I've been doing that for a couple of years, and I talk about um, craft, handmade crafts, knitting, crochet, photography, food, that sort of thing, anything creative. Uh, I guess my unique selling point is that I'm based in Guernsey in the Channel Islands, and I always have a, a local segment of my show, and uh, it's great to be here with you guys. Awesome. Welcome, Martine. Thank you. And Nick, tell us about yourself and your shows. I'm Nick Serbling. I'm the host of the Who Day Weekly podcast, which is a Cincinnati Bengals podcast. I'm also the, the founder of the sports podcast entertainment network, SPNT.TV. And I just recently started a how-to podcast called Start Talking and Recording Today. And it's abbreviated with the word start. Why is that? They call that, actually, it's a, a, a double abbreviation, kind of like lame and start and 
I mean, I'm not saying that your podcast is lame. <laughs> no, you don't. I, it probably is. You're probably right. I can't even get a mix minus right. <laughs> well, it's a great panel of podcasters we have here. And you guys have, I assume, just let me know if I'm wrong. You guys have been listening to podcasts probably even longer than you've been podcasting, correct? Yes, definitely. Of course. So no doubt we're very experienced in our pet peeves of podcasting, things that we hear other podcasters do that just grate on our nerves. And I'm really assuming we've made some of those same mistakes ourselves. So you may have a lot of things to share. You may have just one or two, but the main thing that we're going to focus on with this conversation is not just be a bunch of uh, angry geeks sitting around and saying, oh, rah, 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 this is what we hate about podcasters. But what are the solutions to these things? So maybe this is something that you've done and you could share your solution with us. Or maybe this is something that you've seen other podcasters do. And what is it that could help them out? Because these are going to be helpful, very opinionated conversations. All right. So we got through the introductions. Thank you, Daniel, for what happened there. So always BTS on, on Google Hangouts on air. This is all new. And uh, part of what I'm going to talk about next it goes to the newness of this format. But you have to, once you start the live stream, you have to then embed it on the event page if you want it to show up there. I hadn't done that. It's done. So hopefully you refresh the page and you're seeing this now. And thanks, everyone, for joining us here live. And if you're watching the archive, then um, shame on you. No, I'm kidding. The archive <laughs> is awesome. And there's an audio-only version of this show because people asked for that, which you can subscribe to over at podcastersroundtable.com. There's links to subscribe. Or, of course, you can search in iTunes for that. And speaking of the newness that I just mentioned, I want to say one of the uh, new upgrades I did here each week or each episode or each round, we try to do an upgrade before it was the studio mode, which we talked about, which improves voice quality. And this week I put in a promo video. I don't know if you saw that, but you can, in the place of where the live video will go on the event page, you can insert a sort of a placeholder video and I did that so check out the promo video which is now just on the YouTube page but that's really cool because what you can also do with YouTube is embed links right into the video and it led people who were watching outside the event page right back to the event page to RSVP so that was really cool I hope you guys got a chance to watch and I shot it on that really pretty sexy beast that uh, I got back there which is brand new and uh, eh, well I'm a video geek so anyways <laughs> that's why we're doing that's why we're doing video right uh, Martine, again, thanks for being here in the wee hours. Like, <laughs> I, I hear you're properly caffeinated, so. I am wired on caffeine, yes. <laughs> <laughs> perfect, uh, perfect. Geography is not my strong suit. Where are the Channel Islands? Okay, well, if you know where the UK is and you know where I France do. I know is, that much. <laughs> excellent <laughs> start. <laughs> kind of halfway between the two in the sea somewhere where a bunch okay. of islands. Yeah. And I know that because I looked it up last night. Oh, too kind. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we should uh, dive into this topic. I think that is the updates I have to, uh, oh, you know, I turned off my phone so it wouldn't be sucking up Wi-Fi. And, uh, oh, you're supposed to do this, cover logos, right? No. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to grab what I got off of the great comments that were already submitted to the lead up to this show. Uh, people already listing their podcasting pet peeves. So I have some of those here, which I'm going to bring in throughout the show. And I'm going to uh, kick it off with, uh, let, let's go for this center gets the square or X, however they used to do that. It's an old show. Uh, I'm going to go, uh, Jason knows what I'm talking about that, that puts it on him. And he's going to just start off with his first podcasting pet peeve and a solution. And, and we'll, we'll get into it. Here we go, Jason. Uh, yeah, my first one, uh, actually, I started listening to podcasts not uh, through headphones, but actually uh, hooking it into my car. And I always hated when uh, podcasts weren't compressed. And through the sound of the speakers of the car and uh, all of the noise in there, you'll have one person talking and they're really loud and they're really, you know, at it. And so the radio has to go down and then they start talking very softly. And then you have to crank it way up and then you start getting a lot of uh, feedback from the car itself and problems with that. So my uh, first thing is, you know, uh, compress your audio. It doesn't have to be heavily compressed, uh, and it doesn't have to cost anything. I know if you uh, go over to Daniel's website, you can get a uh, compressor for Audacity over there. Which Daniel? Uh, <laughs> Daniel J. Lewis. <laughs> um, 
I believe it's called Chris's Dynamic Compressor. Is yes. that correct? Yes, Chris's yeah. Dynamic Compressor. Um, you can jump to that link at theaudacitytopodcast.com slash Chris, C-H-R-I-S. And so, Jason, just to jump in, uh, feel free, anyone, to jump in anytime you want. That is the point here. Uh, I want to say that is a, it's a fairly complex problem to solve, right? I would say most people probably wouldn't know where to start, especially with something like a compression tool and Audacity. Any easier solutions for well, this problem? If you're on a Mac, you can use Levelator. I think that's a good uh, good one to use. Uh, the main thing is is that you know you got to get it to, together, and uh, you it it is kind of complex. But uh, I know uh, there's a lot of great uh, people out there that have put out tutorials. I believe you yourself has one. Daniel certainly has one, and uh, so you know, look it up, get the settings right, and then you can just make sure that you use that on all of your podcasts just to get it in the ballpark. And what you don't want is to, you know, aggravate people having to turn it up and turn it down on the radio. Uh, tends to be okay with headphones, in my opinion, but when you're listening to it over speakers, that's uh, one of my biggest pet peeves is when I have to crank the radio up and down. Sure. Awesome. And I, I didn't really introduce yeah. myself. I mean, obviously, I'm... Uh, <laughs> host or whatever i just want to i'm the facilitator of conversation here and uh so ray ortega and jason mentioned that i have a tutorial i have a couple episodes over at the podcasterstudio.com where i actually talk to an audio engineer specifically about compression and a bunch of other processes that will help you deal with those issues so uh check that out and Corey, looked like you wanted to uh you, you had something to add in on that well, I actually was a, an offender of that on my latest episode. I usually take the time to, once I actually post the podcast, I'll download it and I'll go listen to it in my car to make sure I, I didn't mess it up. And I haven't done that in a while because I've been compressing my audio. It sounded great. And my latest episode, an absolutely awesome interview with Mark Zakri, who basically wrote my childhood. I... Po turned on my podcast and I'm driving along and every time my co-host talked, I could barely hear him and I was just bashing my own head off the steering wheel. Uh, um, by the way, I just want to correct, Levelator is available for Mac and Windows. Oh, is uh, it? I thought it was only Mac. No, it's both. I think it I might use even it. be Linux too, but uh, the website isn't quite loading for me. It's at conversationsnetwork.org. Yeah. I'm a Windows user and I use Levelator. I will never uh, upload a podcast without uh, using Levelator. I love it. Awesome. Right. So, Nick, uh, while you're on cam, I'm on cam, but Nick, uh, <laughs> why don't you go ahead and, and, and tell us uh, one of yours. Jason, thanks for that. One of my bigger pet peeves, and, and, and I don't want to bash the service completely because it does some good things, but when somebody tells me that they do a podcast and their URL starts with blog talk radio. We all, we all knew yeah. where that was going. I, I knew totally. Not, not. You know, it, that again, tells you something. It does some great things. It really does. It gives you the chance to interact with your audience, but there are ways to uh, do that on your own blog and on your own site. Uh, there are chat applets. Uh, I use chat tango. Um, if, if, the, if you're really only going for, the interactivity with your audience, you could self-host that on your own website. There's no real necessary reason to, to use Blog Talk Radio. Maybe if you want to take live callers, but in my experience with podcasters, they're listening to it later anyway, so the chances of them calling live aren't great. So again, Blog Talk, it has some pluses, I guess, but when you can self-host it and do the own interactivity on your own website, why pass up on that opportunity? And real quick for the uninitiated, why does that rattle you? What, what, what makes that a pet peeve? What is it about blog talk? Real the quick. sound quality is horrendous. Yes. That's the only reason, really, to be honest. So it, All right. it's tough listening to a show uh, with that sound quality. No, I agree. It's a total pet peeve and uh, something I have listed down uh, myself. And it's you know, that's a subject, subject, oh boy, subjective one, but, um, you know, I agree with it. And I think if you listen to podcasts over a certain amount of time, you'll start to really notice because you'll hear nice sounding podcast and then you'll go back and hear your blog talk radio podcast and you'll say, that's not too comfortable to listen to, but I want to get to Martine before she falls asleep. And also <laughs> Martine holds another special position here on the round table being 
the first female. So applause. <laughs> we got the female voice is much needed, and uh, we're looking forward to having. I, I need to have like maybe you can take over the hosting one time. We'll do an all female <laughs> roundtable one time that without me, like or I'll, maybe I'll put on a dress. And, put on a dress. Uh, really weird. No, no. Let's. I'd love to see that. <laughs> it's gonna get really weird. We'll make that a Halloween special. All right, Martina. I like that. Go ahead and tell us one of your uh, podcasting pet peeves. Okay, well, probably my biggest pet peeve when listening to podcasts is, um, this is quite kind of icky, but mouth sounds, that kind of spitty sound that some people can have when they're talking. Wait, and... wait, everyone, everyone, give us your best best example. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, oh God, no. stop. Oh. Oh. I'm going, I can't The most disgusting moment, the most oh. disgusting moment in podcast or roundtable history. That's for the I outtakes. Just, oh, it makes me switch off and um, it's horrible. Actually, in real life with people, I struggle with that as well. But but it is, I think it's quite easy to solve and um, the biggest tip I can give is, uh, oh, I think I'm advertising for Magnus there, but um, yeah, a glass of water. I, I would always, I always am very hydrated before I start podcasting. I brush my teeth. I don't know if that helps um and keep mm. i pause and i sip and i keep going and then i always listen to my audio afterwards in in various ways through headphones stick it in my car just to check for that particular thing amongst other things and i just think that is one of my that's top of my list actually oh well see that's great to know you never know what's on the top of someone's list and, and that's a great <laughs> one and it's something that i bet mo most people don't think of um and it's a great one water is a great tip and I think there's even like some some interesting recipes online for like water and lemon juice and people get really I mean there's voiceover actors this is a very serious element for voiceover actors so you can find <laughs> recipes but at least have some water because you will get the dry mouth and it's noticeable all right Daniel Clark well I, I wrote down a list of things actually I wrote down a list of nine things because I wasn't sure if Everyone was going to take all my suggestions before you got to me, so I, did, I made a big list. Good strategy. Um, I'm, I got one, though, that I kind of want to needle Daniel about a little bit because I know he's going to react to this one. Uh, <laughs> profanity. Okay. I don't have a problem with profanity. However, the overuse and misuse of profanity is a big, big turnoff for me. I, I, I loaded up for the first time. I'm not going to name the show because I don't want to call people out, but um, I loaded up a show for the first time um, two or three days ago, and I know the F word is the most versatile word in the human language, in the English language, rather. I get that, and I know it can be used in literally every single part of speech, and this guy was doing that. <laughs> it was literally, <laughs> it was used four times in every sentence, and that just turns me off, wow. you know? It's, it's a scalpel, not a sledgehammer. Use it correctly, and, and don't, don't overdo it, you know? Yeah, I, I know I, Daniel would rather have everybody be clean, <laughs> but oh, okay. I was come on, come when on. You said that it, it sounded like you were going to say that I was a big proponent of profanity. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. I know you're not. I know you're not. Um, right, so, I, well, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, you know, the other thing to uh, kind of go off that is people that have a lot of profanity and then don't put explicit. Yeah, on there that kills me That's because yep. I, you know, I I like to listen to it not through headphones but through speakers, and I have a young child, and as slips are okay, I'm fine with that. That's you know a part of speech. He's got to get used to it. But like you said, every other word or, uh, you know, not putting an explicit, and at least telling me, hey, there's going to be a, a lot of swearing in this. That's yeah. what kills me. And that's an important element because that that can get you in trouble on iTunes, right? I mean, yeah. you could literally. Yeah get your show taken off iTunes if it's not labeled correctly, especially if you're using it that much. I guarantee someone's going to report you. So solution to that would be first step, label yourself explicit. And right. uh, second and step, second you know. Step, just examine how you're speaking, you know, and, and realize that if you're overdoing it, you're going to lose an audience. And try to dial, dial yourself back if you need to. Yeah, I mean, I think the best description there with the uh, scalpel sledgehammer thing was, yeah. was pretty mm -hmm. good because, you know, I don't mind... Um, strong language at all. I'm a, I'm a grown up, no problem. But right. overuse, uh, it's just it's going to be it's See, I, not a very effective. I was thinking about this um, earlier, how I was going to broach the topic, and I thought um, scalpel sledgehammer, but also profanity to me is like an exclamation point. Mm -hmm. When you're writing, if every sentence has an exclamation point, it looks ri ridiculous, right? 
you can't do it like that. You have to have periods and question marks and you have to have a wide range. You can't have, you can't drop an F-bomb in every single sentence. It's overuse. You got to dial it back. Yeah. And so I have a running list of potential people who are interested in being here on the round table. And, uh, you know, if you're interested in that, chatting in the chat room is a great way to do that because I actually know you're there and I know you, I get names that way. Um, I think, you know, I've had Corey and the yep. has been on the list and I'm not sure if we discussed actually having a round table about strong language. You, is you that, is that you? Okay. Yes. So you have a show where yeah. I think you use probably strong language. So you should definitely ring in on this. Uh, yeah. I what mean, are your thoughts? We, we use it sparingly. Um, very rarely, uh, actually, since you and I quickly talked about it, it, it kind of it kept me up all night one night. I'm like, are we swearing too much? Why did he even bring that up? <laughs> so I, I immediately kind of curbed myself and I pulled it back. And I, I still label it as explicit. And if my guest is going to swear every now and then, I'm going to leave it in. They always tend to, oops, is that okay? You know what? I, I don't have the time to sit there and edit an hour-long conversation for all the little explicitives. Yeah. I'll, I'll just tag it. You know, obviously, a, a, there's there's nothing stopping a 13-year-old from listening to the podcast. Apple's going to let them do it, but yeah, I, I'm yeah, not going to take the time to take it out. I I, I, can, I control myself a little better now, I think, but yeah. I'm not going to control the guests. Awesome. Well, I, I apologize for any turmoil, turmoil I caused. Oftentimes, you know, that's also good. If you tell me you were interested in being on the show, also tell me topics you're interested in talking to other, uh, or talking about. Otherwise, I'll just go and pick them for you. And I think, you know, yeah. sometimes I get a chance to run over and hear some of the podcasts and I bet I just hit the sweet spot. And I was like, oh, you know, because to be honest with you, you know, I, I guess it depends on how you search. But I would say the majority of, of podcasts aren't going to be labeled explicit. And um, so, you know, anyone I heard using any kind of language like that, I was, it's a great topic. You know, yeah. I definitely don't think that it's, uh, it's very subjective and it just depends on the show. And, you, you know, the big media or the big group in podcasting now is sort of the comedian podcaster. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Daniel does have the clean comedy podcast, but I would say the majority of them are, they're not clean. So, so it's an interesting topic, especially in a, in a niche that's growing uh, heavily. Yeah. And I mean, uh, even if my at the particular episode has no swearing, I, I leave the explicit tag up. Yeah, might, yeah, but, might as well. You can do it. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no. I'm just all you. I was gonna say you can put it on episode by episode too. So that's the thing. It doesn't have to, in my opinion, be an overarching. If it's in the one episode, uh, if you have a guest on that swears, or um, I actually had a. Uh, uh, host that uh, I asked to either cut it out or not be a part of the podcast anymore. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, because I had to keep putting explicit on there and I knew I could actually see people losing people mm -hmm. because of that. And so, you know, and for somebody that talks about horror films, it, it seems like the right genre to be swearing all the time. And I think that's one thing that sets us slightly apart is that a lot of the other podcasts they are drinking and swearing throughout the whole podcast, which it's fine if that's their niche and that's what they want to do. But I tend not to listen to that because I don't want all that around my son. It is about your niche, though, isn't it? Because um, mm -hmm. I'm part of the Knitting Podcast community, and that's going to sound a bit bonkers, but actually the Knitting <laughs> Podcast community is massive. Just think about it for a moment. When you're knitting, your hands are busy. So what do you do? You listen to a podcast. There are masses of knitters who podcast. And, and, and kind, knitters like swear tea. like sailors. Well, yes, what can I say? I mean, mouths <laughs> like toilets. Um, you know, I don't actually listen to any podcasts that have any swearing in Um the other thing I would add is about professional identity. I, I'm a lecturer in the day. There is a possibility that my students could download my podcast and it's not sort of professionally appropriate for me to be swearing, despite the fact that I might swear like a sailor when I'm in the pub after work. <laughs> do, do you know what I mean? So it is kind of community. It depends on your niche. And I think the key is that explicit tag, really, isn't it? Because yeah. you're telling people what to expect. Awesome. All right. So we've... we've pretty much hammered that one to the ground. So good topic, everyone, for especially for a round table. Uh, you know, I don't know if Daniel J has got one in. I Is that correct? Have you got one in yet? Yes or no? No, I haven't. Okay, all right. So I'm going to let Daniel J go. 
and uh, perhaps he'll steal the one that that I was going to have here. But we, one more chance to steal from the from the audience. <laughs> what game would that be? All right. My biggest pet peeve that I hear with podcasters is when they tell the audience to do something, something mm-hmm. very important that should be a lot simpler. Here are a couple examples. Things like find us in iTunes or search for us in iTunes. That's that's very similar to saying, oh yeah, find my phone number in the phone book or <laughs> find my website on Google. Yeah. It's like, well, just give me your phone number. Just give me a link to your iTunes. And like with a free extension for WordPress called Pretty Link, it's really easy to create a Pretty Link to your iTunes account or to your iTunes page for your podcast so people can then jump straight to it. Or very similar with other things like links that you might mention in your podcast instead of telling them, oh yeah, go to www.this.that slash here slash there slash here and oink, there and oink, everywhere and oink, oink, dot HTML. <laughs> just tell them the link is in the show notes at, and then that's the other thing. Don't tell them look for the show notes. Give them an easy link. Again, use pretty link. Don't change the post slug for your page for your show notes don't change that let that be nice and search engine optimized but use pretty link to create an easy link so it could be like your podcast domain slash and then an episode number that's what i do with all of mine so that way i can tell everyone this is the site i got this from for the exact link go to the show notes so i'm continually giving people the exact same domain and the only thing that changes is slash itunes or slash one, two, three, slash, whatever. So it's a very short URL that they've by now memorized the main part of my web address. So all they have to remember is what is that thing after the slash. So be careful what you're asking your audience to do and actually try not to ask them to do too much. Make it as simple for them as possible. I'm very guilty of that, Daniel. I always, in almost every episode, tell my fans to to find us in iTunes. And yet I also utilize Pretty Link. So, yeah, I don't, yeah, good one. You actually have me wondering now, and I'm going back to listen just for that. Me too. (laughs) (laughs) All right, good. Spoiling podcast one at a time. Here we go. All right, we're taking out like seven podcasts right here. Yeah. We're all going to have better shows when we go back, right? You know, even though, so Pretty Link's a a pretty Link's Lite or pretty Link, a free resource, right? Pretty Link yeah. Lite is free, yeah. All right. All right. I like the pro version just because it adds pro. some extra features. Like instead of having to go to a separate page to make your Pretty Link, you can create your Pretty Link right there on the page or post when you're creating oh, it. Oh, so it's so, pretty. Mm, yeah, right. it's a lot prettier of a Pretty right. Link. How nice of them. All right, so <laughs> in the comments before this started, we had some great ones, and I can't believe nobody said this because this was the overwhelming number one thing listed in the uh, comments with, from Ken Bergen, Dave Jackson, Fred Castaneda. I want to say that correct. That's a slaughtering of it, which is horrible because he says his la- he says my last name better than I say it. And uh, Kerry Green all said, get to the point. Mm-hmm. All right, so either whether it's long intros with, you know, a song that, you know, is five minute song or mostly they all were talking about, you know, saying stuff up front and just talking about random stuff that's really not related to the episode uh, for the first 10 or 15 minutes. And they really want you to have the point. And a solution to this that, that they were saying uh, was, you know, to have notes, you know, at a minimum, some bullet points uh, to help you stay on track. And then, of course, we have or actually with Dave Jackson, uh, he, he gave a, a great quote. He said, don't start an hour long podcast. If you only have 38 minutes of material, start a 39 minute podcast. So <laughs> that, that was kind of funny, but, uh, there is rebuttal to that, which is what we always want to see. And, uh, uh, Corey uh, Feinerman, hopefully I'm saying that right. Uh, his audience likes when they go off topic and, uh, you know, because it really lets the personalities come through, right? People, so I think that it really is, again, a situation of niche base. Obviously, uh, you know, p- taking a broad stroke for any one podcast is never going to work out. Uh, but, you know, think about your intros. Um, if that's part of your show and people like it, then, you know, it's something maybe to work with. And, uh, but does anyone have anything to say with getting to the point? <laughs> yeah, they, uh, they kind of took like three of uh, what I have on my list and combined them into one. So kudos to that. Uh, I obviously wasn't smart enough to combine them. But uh, no, I, I'm right there. Uh, you know, when I listen to a podcast and there's a minute long, 
uh, song at the beginning or uh, what even makes it worse is right at the beginning they want to talk about their day, their week, their spouse, their dog, and they're complaining about it right from the get-go. And I want to listen to, you know, just the meat of it, and I have to go through all of this before I can actually hear what I want to hear. So it's a, it's a, it is a tough one because does anyone here have a show where they do a lot of chit-chat up front, or are we all getting to the point? I see a hand raised in a tiny box. We're going to go now. <laughs> We're going to go to our man on the scene, Daniel M. Clark. <laughs> well, my main show, Zap, is actually um, we wing it a lot. But that's only because we've been doing it for so long that it's easy for us to get into a groove. Um, I go in with a couple of bullet points at the top, but more often than not, five minutes before we start recording, I get my co-host on Skype and I go, "Hey, man, what's going on with you? <laughs> you know, let's let's talk about what we're going to do on the show today." You know, and because of that, we can often we take a minute or two or three at the very beginning of the show to say, "Hey, how are you? What's going on? How how are things?" Um, but that's the format of the show. The entire show is very conversational, and it's not necessarily educational. We're not trying to teach people things, so there's no meat of it to get to, if that makes sense. Sure, mm -hmm. sure. And, you know, I mean, it's important. So yeah. um, it does depend on the type of show. You know, and I think right. maybe one of the elements to that sort of pet peeve is that People who maybe, like you said, you guys are in a groove, but there can be a lot of ums and ahs. If you don't really have an idea or at least a, a path of where you want to get mm -hmm. to by the end of the show, it can be a little frustrating when people don't sort of, maybe even they sit there and be like, hey, you know, when you were kids, you say, what do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? You know, it's a like, lot of my early know. shows were like that because we would... You know, when we first started, we were great about coming up with topics and this is what we're going to talk about. We knew days in advance what we we're going to talk about. And then we started getting too comfortable. Yeah. And then we started to wing it. And it was okay at first, but then it started to drop off and we had lots of long pauses. So and what's, lots your, of, what, what's your solution? To, to, to the, how did you get back on track or did you not get back on track? Oh, we got back on track mainly by bringing it back to having a plan of attack before recording. So, so whereas we were pure improv for a while there, we at least have a few bullet points now. So when we start to do the intro and, hey, how you doing and what's going on with you and all that, I immediately know where we can go next. Yeah. So Fantastic. we jump into that main topic. Awesome. All right. You know, one thing uh, on that, sometimes this might result in varying length episodes because you may realize that in one episode, you've only got 20 minutes of content. In another episode, you've got an hour of content. Mm -hmm. But like Dave and all of those other guys that Ray mentioned have said is – don't expand 20 minute content to an hour. And I would say on the other side, don't compress our content to 20 minutes. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I would say it's, it's okay if your episodes are different lengths, mm -hmm. un inconsistent lengths, as long as you're consistent with only spending as much time as necessary. It's great to have them around the same length. Yeah. And typically you probably will because you'll get the feel of the timing of your podcast. But if one is 30 minutes, the next one's 45, the next one's 50, the next one's 30, I think that's okay if, if you're only spending the time necessary on your content. I tend to swing yeah. 10 minutes on either side of an hour. Mm -hmm. so, cool. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to bring in uh, one of my own and wrap it in with another one that Elsie uh, uh, Escobar uh, in the chat before this live episode shares one of my big pet peeves, and that's no way to easily contact a podcaster on their website or you know, however, however else – they're out there. Um, and related to that, you know, so let's deal with the website one. If I go to your website and there's no contact page, um, that's a problem for me because obviously it's going to be hard for me to get in touch with you. And oftentimes you just give up. And if you want feedback on your show, you know, you probably, besides saying it in your show, people need it on the website. So really like to see a well-formed, uh, a well-formed contact page. And, you know, even to the point where I don't even like forms. I, I really want to see an email, but that we're talking pet peeve now. Um, it just helps me keep it organized and in my own sort of, um, you know, atmosphere of Gmail. Anyways, I won't go deeper into that. I, I, but, ha uh, I have to say something on that. I have uh, to, I'm sorry. <laughs> the most annoying thing when people try to be friendly and put their email address on a site is when it says uh, feedback bracket and oh, then shit. at bracket and it's completely unusable there's and a great plug it's supposed out there. to be 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the idea. So the bots can't get it. We don't want you to email us, but if you really have to, we're going to make you work for it. <laughs> There's a great plugin for WordPress that makes this really easy. It's called CryptX, and that's just the letter X at the end, not E-X, but just C-R-Y-P-T-X. It's a free plugin, and it allows you to encrypt your email address, and you have different options. If you really want to, you can employ that painful option with the brackets and stuff, <laughs> but you can mm. also do it so your email address is in plain text so humans can copy it into their email program, or they can just click it, and it... Um, loads their email program but it's scrambled so bots can't get it right. so you're being friendly and yet still protecting yourself from spam cool spam. An cool another oh. another good resource and i wanted to say related to that too on things like twitter and this is total pet peeve for me uh so it doesn't necessarily mean you have to do it but i you know in this day and age we're not on the internet anymore where you need to be a uh, crazy girl one two three yeah. right um there is something to using your own name and i really appreciate a real name uh that's just my personal pet peeve jason's laughing because i think he actually started on aol as crazy girl one two three <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, so welcome crazy girl one two three i want to jump I over did. quick. all right nice <laughs> Uh, I want to jump over to Corey. Uh, D Daniel says we might have skipped a uh, skipped a pet peeve. So uh... skip me, but uh, pretty much the one that people wrote in was kind of mine. Um, is the, the long intros, but mine specifically, the long self promotion or the you know sponsors ads that just go on for ten minutes. That's yeah. that's the most ridiculous thing ever. <laughs> Yeah, and any any kind of solution you can think to. What if you do have sponsors, right? So let's just deal with the fact that you have sponsors, yeah. right? So you have to bring this into your show. Of course. Um, and I think I think Leo Laporte does it better than anybody. Does the offending long ad better than anybody? <laughs> yes, he does. No, <laughs> I, I think his ads, they might be a little long, but they're sprinkled throughout the show in a non-nuisance way. It's, yeah. it's not... Yeah. 10 minutes that you have to scrub through at the beginning of the show to get to the meat. It used to be. All I can say is yeah. thank goodness for the yeah. skip ahead 30 seconds on the app that I listen yeah. to the podcast on. But, um, you know, to, to address that, I, I agree with you. The host read ad and not just a reading a script. Um, they do a good job, even though we have to hear the audible ad every time <laughs> we listen to it. At least they talk about new content each time. So someone's going to yeah. talk about the book they're listening to, and I will actually find myself listening to the Audible ad if it sounds like a book that I'm interested in. Uh, I so, will say I, I did sign up for Audible because of Leo. And there you go. All right, so <laughs> let's move uh, let's move on down the line. And uh, Daniel Clark, do you have another pet peeve you want to get in here? Or? I do. Let me. Where's my list? Here it is. Um, let's see. How about people who put on a voice that isn't themselves? <laughs> right if you try to if you get on your podcast and you put on your radio <laughs> voice and hey this is 104.5 fm and <laughs> if it's not you on a podcast i think that's a major turnoff and i, I want to hear you talk like yourself not like somebody else well, daniel Unless i'm actually he... american <laughs> <laughs> just so you know, um, nice. this, is, this is not me at all. Yeah, nice. <laughs> you do a great accent. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, um, <laughs> um, the only exception is if you can pull it off consistently, because I think most people can't. I found, um, mm -hmm. you know, by the end of the show, if you start off with some kind of persona, by the end of the show, very often you've let that slip, you know, and and and, and it can be obvious, but. I suppose there are a few people that can maybe build a persona and, and pull it off. Like Stephen Colbert probably isn't like that in real life, for example. But I think that kind of thing is rare. I think that kind of talent is rare. Awesome. And for, for the average podcaster, just be yourself. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. Nick, I see you sitting there. I haven't heard from you in a while. I've got one, and I don't know if I necessarily have a solution for it, but it's just something that I've been encountering a lot lately, and it's been a big pet peeve of mine. And it's not even of me listening to podcasts. It's when I'm actually publishing my work. And ever since I started my podcast network, I am using two media directs um, or media redirects through Blueberry. I've got my network and then my show redirects. And now since I've got two redirects, I have to manually log into each account and refresh my feed in order for those shows to show up in the featured content portion of Blueberry. Again, I don't know how to fix that. I don't know if anybody else is encountering it, but it's a huge pet peeve of mine having to log into each and every account every time I publish a podcast. 
Awesome. Well, we uh, we can we can always tweet up Blueberry. Uh, they're pretty good at responding that way, and uh, hopefully we get Todd or Angelo on here one time. And uh, if they haven't addressed it yet, we'll work on it. Daniel, you look like you want to say something. Yeah. Jay. So, are you using a separate username and password for each stats uh, tracker? Uh, I have my network account, so I have individual accounts. I started off with my own show, individual shows, and now. I have a network account as well. So that's probably what's causing it. I've got mm. six or seven different logins now to Blueberry that I'm using. And that, that might be a problem too. But Yeah, you could contact them because I'm sure they could probably do this for you. That they could move all of those separate keywords, that, like the Blueberry tracking keywords, into a single account without your losing your stats. So that way you just log in once mm. and you can just switch between your shows. Uh, I might cool. have so to bottom that. line, if you have a pet peeve of Blueberry... Contact them, and I, I've, they're pretty <laughs> minimal to, to helping you out, so do that. Uh, Martin, uh, any pet peeve that we can actually make audible again? Because I really want to do more lip smacking. But. <laughs> um, actually, I've, I've, this is a small one and I think an easy one to fix. I get a bit frustrated with podcasters who consist, uh, constantly apologize for the fact that they haven't recorded for a while. And you know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I have to interrupt you. I feel so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I just please don't apologize because you're producing content that I love to listen to it's free um, just when you're going to record I will listen to you and I'm not going to stop subscribing I'll just wait till your show turns up and you know there's no need to apologize just keep doing what you're doing that would be my message to people who apologize all the time you're the only nice listener out there <laughs> <laughs> Podcasting I, is a is a weird medium, and I've never understood why. If you don't produce a podcast, maybe you miss a month. Who knows what you have going on in your life? People unsubscribe. Podcasts um, oh, yeah. come to you automatically. So, anyways, yeah, uh, yeah I don't pet peeve the away. side. I don't know what it is, but it seems like the only time I really get feedback uh, in email form <laughs> is if I miss a week. And, well, that's, that's a good sign. Good that's a good it's sign. It's nice. Yeah. Yeah, Jason I wonder. I you... wonder how many people notice when you miss a week or two. You know, it's nice when I mean, I'm sure do. some do, but my yeah. funniest thing is that I keep getting people liking the Facebook page of my original podcast that we stopped doing about six months ago. <laughs> I'm getting new listeners to that all the time, and it doesn't even exist. So. Well, maybe hmm. you need to fire it back up. I don't know. <laughs> Jason, uh, hit us with something. Uh, hey, this is Rob Bautel with W. Ah, well done. <laughs> I had to use, I actually, I was going to say, jump in before that. Uh, my first job in broadcasting was at a country radio station, and I hate country. <laughs> and I had to talk just like that. This is, Ro and they changed my name. This is Rob Bautel, and that was the latest Travis trip with his. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Um, so uh, my next one is actually if you're guesting on a podcast, and this has happened to me uh, three or four times, not knowing how long you're actually going to be on there. So uh, people have asked me to join on their podcast, you know, as a, a guest host or as an interview, and they have, have an hour-long podcast, but it takes them two and a half, three hours to record. So I will block out an hour, or, you know, give, and, give or take, I'm okay with, uh, thinking that that's what it's going to be, and then find out that I have to sit there and for an extra two hours. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, have a brief experience. If you don't know, I actually produce podcasts professionally for a living for a large member organization here in D.C., and um, we were doing a video podcast, and uh, we deal with a very well-respected scientists. Um, and afterwards, after I saw him squirming in his seat for about, uh, you know, two and a half hours through the lens of my camera, uh, you know, I talked to him and, uh, it turned out he thought he was coming on for about a half hour and, uh, this was a three hour podcast. So, um, it's a very good, <laughs> very good, uh, thing to communicate well with your co-host and or guest, you know, outline that stuff really well because, uh, it might not be coming back on and your, and your content uh, might not turn out so well if they're really uncomfortable. Yes. Yeah. Daniel. Jay. Which one? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Just slow. Yeah. One of my um, other pet peeves just completely escaped my mind. Oh, because that's okay because <laughs> I, I know, um, I know there's Daniel's There's a puppy pet. here in uh, the studio and um, I want to talk about this puppy for a minute because... Uh, 
Uh, and oh look a bird outside yeah. and, 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 and see now here's what a good co-host so says is, uh, I have a mute option maybe all podcasts need a mute option now I actually know and I am shocked out of my gourd that this has not been brought up by Mr. Daniel J it was like a softball tossing to him but he, he whiffed Tell us about podcast categorization. Well, and, and no, I was like just I was just illustrating my pet peeve. Yeah, you didn't very well. Think about that. <laughs> <laughs> very well. I know, um, but but I know this one drives you crazy, and I, I thought it'd be top of your list, and you know what I'm talking about. Uh, do, podcasts do not belong in the podcasting category unless they're about podcasting. Okay, <laughs> done with that one. Let me talk about this one. <laughs> Don't derail me. Uh, it's so often, especially if people are doing video podcasts and they also release it as audio, what can happen is they start referring to things and discussing things that the audience has absolutely no context to mm -hmm. know what they're talking about. So they might refer to something like, oh, what's that blinking light there? Hey, can you fix that blinking light? That, that's really distracting me. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's blinking. Or, or what's that? You know, people don't have any idea what you're talking about. Or sometimes there might be a noise outside and you draw attention to it, but your audience might not have even heard the noise. Your microphone might not have picked it up. So these things that distract from the content that you're sharing and really don't add anything to it. You bump the microphone, eh, try not to bump it, but you might bump it. You don't have to apologize for it. Just keep going. Try to avoid distracting uh, your audience from your content and stay on your content. And whatever's happening i mean if it's a dog put the dog out of the room or maybe they might bark but s stay on your content and if there's a major distraction though that can make the experience fun then yes leave that in there like one time um, i was using my ipad for a soundboard and i did this thing on my ipad where when you grab all of your fingers and squash them together now notice i'm explaining this while i'm showing on video i'm not just <laughs> saying when you do this um, but when you grab all of your fingers and squeeze them together on an iPad, it goes to the home screen. And I tried doing this on my soundboard app because I needed to switch apps on my iPad. <laughs> and it played every single sound effect on the soundboard. It just nice. blew up like that. And we left it in because it was hilarious. Uh, so stuff like that can be great. But some of the other things that are just distracting or that don't matter to your listeners... Try and cut that out. Um, try and just not acknowledge it at all or maybe edit it out later. Awesome. And so back to uh, the chat room. And actually, speaking of, Daniel, if you could browse real quick and see if you can pick up a more recent one. I have ones from, from before we started, but it looks like a lot of good chat going on. And let's try to bring one of those in uh, real time here. And I will say that Elsie, uh, how about this one? So I'm, I'm looking in iTunes. I'm browsing around for a new show. Oh, and I click on this one that's got, uh, it's, you know, Martine's case, maybe it's got some knitting tools on the thing. And I, I click on it and I say, oh, I, already, I listen to four different knitting podcasts. And what's this one about? And it says, hey, we're just two knitters talking about anything and everything, right? Mm -hmm. So a description that really tells you nothing about the content. And, you know, I will say this may be your only chance. You know, the artwork may be your only chance. The description uh, then might be your only chance. There's a lot of ways that people can browse uh, through iTunes and see a lot of shows. And if you don't have something that's going to sort of tell them, you know, at least in a couple sentences, what they're going to find, you're, you're probably losing a lot of listeners. Um, so anyone have experience with, you know, really nondescript shows or, or coming across this when you see other podcasts? Uh, we kind of did that right at the beginning of the creeper cast by accident. Uh, you know, we didn't know what to put in there, so you put in, well, we talk about horror films, so um, <laughs> two guys uh, give it, you know, I think it had something to do with, uh, you know, showing their love for horror or something like that. I mean, it was just so nondescript, and we couldn't figure out why we weren't, nobody was listening uh, for that first couple months, and we couldn't figure out as soon as we changed that and changed our logo also. Mm -hmm. uh it, all of a sudden, that's when things started taking off. Nice. Real nice. And uh, this may be offending uh, Daniel's pet peeve, but Daniel, raise your hand when, because <laughs> there is an audio-only version of this. If you can't see Daniel raising his hand, I'm sure he'll take a picture of you and, of, of it and send it to you. But don't worry. Daniel, raise your hand uh, when you do have uh, a comment there. And uh, I'm going to jump here to Nick and uh, see what's on his mind. 
Uh, one other pet peeve that I have, and uh, again, uh, another one of these where I don't know the, the proper answer to, to really to fix this or a resolution, but as an example from this week on one of my shows, uh, Who Day Weekly, we had a guest on, and we promoted all kinds of stuff for him during the episode. We plugged his, his radio show, his web address, and, and that sort of stuff, but then after the show was posted... You know, I kindly sent him an email. I kindly sent him a direct message with all the links to the to the episode so that he could promote his appearance on our podcast on his outlets and no response, mm. no promotion whatsoever. Bummer. Yeah. Mm. Any ideas on how to fix that? <laughs> yeah, crickets. Some people know. are just like that, I guess. Bringing it to a halt. Like, <laughs> kindly share it with them like let them know hey here's the episode posted it sounded great and all of this and oh, yeah, it'd be I did awesome all if you could yeah. and they still didn't respond yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So you want to be part of the uh, knitting podcast community we're very sweet to each other that would never happen <laughs> <laughs> start a knitting show it'll be great absolutely yeah. must be a sports talk thing I reckon. Sport I knitting. I guarantee there's like extreme <laughs> knitting somewhere, right? Oh, there is. Yes, definitely. <laughs> there, there does come a point, I think, when, if, especially if you're with podcasters in the same niche where others or maybe even yourself sometimes may feel like other podcasters in your niche are competition. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where sometimes even if the other podcast won't mention you, sometimes it's best to just be the better person and be fine with mentioning other podcasts and different perspectives because we're all approaching whatever that subject is from different perspectives so it's like painting a 3d object i've got this side you've got that side someone else has that side mm -hmm. so that's why like if you listen to the podcast about podcasting we're often referring to each other and saying oh yeah go listen to so-and-so's episode they covered this and it was really helpful or so-and-so has a blog post about this so even though we're kind of competition don't treat it that way. So if, if you're in a situation where the person isn't mentioning you, maybe it's because they feel like that you are competition for them. Just take the higher road and move on sometimes. Yeah, I can understand yeah. that. You know, he, the person that we interviewed was an, an actual radio personality. He wasn't even a podcaster. He was just somebody who's a local sports talk host in Cincinnati. And uh, he has a website and he's promoted us before when he was on the show. But for some reason this time around, he, and, then, and I don't want to badger him either, because, but at the same time, it would be nice to have the publicity. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And then, Daniel, you did have your hand raised, so did you grab something from the chat? Yeah, channel? I've got uh, from Sean McGahey. I hope oh, I'm, I'm glad you that said that, correctly. because I didn't want to mess it up, because I, <laughs> I have one of Sean's here as well. So Some of my podcast listeners know now to send a pronunciation key with their names. <laughs> <laughs> um, he says uh, his pet peeve is when... A podcast lists an iTunes link, but no RSS link. They have an RSS link because iTunes just repackages it. So why don't they publish the Jeezly RSS link? I don't know what he means by that word, but uh, yeah, I've seen this by many other people. I have also sent this in as pet peeves that there are other programs out there besides iTunes. So let people subscribe to your podcast in whatever program they choose by having a link to your RSS feed on your site. Awesome. And uh, see that uh, JD Sutter in the chat has said he has had that uh, same problem that Nick has had. So, uh, you know, maybe get together with JD, see how he dealt with it. You know, <laughs> I don't know. Um, you know, I'll tell you, I'll never mention Daniel's name on my own show because it's just like absolutely <laughs> ridiculous. But we are, Daniel, if you don't know, Daniel and I do podcast about podcasting. And to speak to the competition thing, you know, um, what would you rather have? You know, would you rather mention someone who already has maybe thousands of listeners, right? So the point is, you know, I always tell people uh, there's always room for another hit song on your iPod, right? If another hit song comes out and it just sounds great, you're like, I don't have any more room for another song. That song is great. I don't have any more room. If I listen to a podcast about podcasting, which I do, um, I'm probably going to consume them all. Why? Because that's my niche. I'm a junkie for that topic. So, you know, competition, that, that whole thing seems a bit ridiculous. So yeah. I think we're, we're, we're not uh, old school media. We're not fighting for a time slot. So. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Corey on mic there, anything else to uh, add? We are getting close to the end. We'll speed round it here. Um, um I, I guess something we were guilty of early on is, um, um, you know, um, 
so how was your day? Um, <laughs> when, you, when you have a guest on and you really don't know what to talk about and there's a lot of ums going on, it's, uh, yeah, um, hard. Mm. <laughs> awesome. So, you know, again, for, for people in that situation, you know, maybe writing out a script is, you know, and not reading it, but having some direction. Um, and if you don't, then it may show up in your stats or maybe you just find a lot of people who, who like the ums. I don't know. Yeah. All right, Daniel, uh, Daniel M. Clark, uh, <laughs> speed rounding here. I'll, I'll do two because I'm going to combine two related things that I have on my list. Uh, the first thing I wrote down was people who don't equate podcasting to other established forms of media like TV and radio. People that don't give podcasting the credit that it's due. It's a, it's a viable, vibrant form of media. It's as every bit worthy as television and radio, and I think it deserves the same kind of respect. I, I think uh, that's changed a lot recently. It has. I, I believe it has in the past couple of years. Yeah, it's getting, yeah. It's getting better. I mean, it's easier for me to get an interview with known celebrities and composers and whatnot mm -hmm. now, and even their media corporations are coming to me and putting me on their media list, so... I get advanced copies of soundtracks and do you want to interview this composer, this director, blah, blah, blah. Awesome. Daniel, is awesome. there a second part to that? Or? The second part to that was um, people who call podcasting online radio. Mm. Radio is a discrete technology. It has, I wrote down, it has as much in common with podcasting as movies do with television. There is, they share some things in common, broad elements, but they are separate technologies. And, other complaints that we talked about before aside, I hate blog talk radio for that very reason because they call themselves blog talk radio. It's not radio. Yeah, cool. So, I, I agree. All right, Daniel J. Well, I'll bring in two things that came in from Corey Feinran in the chat. Uh, points out one of my pet peeves, podcasts that obsess on lack of listeners and listener interaction. This would be like, where people are just saying, oh, anybody out there, please, please email us. We don't get any email. You guys really need to email us. I hear that on uh, a lot of the podcast or some of the podcasts I listen to. And then Corey continued, also one of my pet, pet peeves on the other side of things, podcasts that inflate their importance and influence. Mm -hmm. I think if you look at the podcasts out there that are the best or the number one, they don't say they're the best or the number one but the podcasts that aren't or are far from it do claim to be the best or number one <laughs> and i've seen that across the board and in just about every industry someone will say this is the podcast about this or this is the best one or this is the number one one or anything like that and whenever someone says that i can pretty much assume that's they're not the number one or they're not the best yeah, but uh, two pet peeves there from Corey Feinran. I like also, it when somebody does it tongue in cheek when they say, "Welcome to your favorite podcast about whatever." <laughs> I think it's funny when you do it like that. Or you could, since the podcast awards are going on right now, which by the way, there's a great video at podcastawards.com. Vote every day until November fifteenth. But there's a great video there where Todd Cochran goes through a lot of things that are very similar to these things. He shares some statistics and what podcasters aren't doing. But uh, there on the podcast awards, pretty much anyone who was at all nominated in the awards could claim to be award nominated podcast. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and uh, you know, even the even the podcast awards might be a small pet peeve of mine. I, you know, you have to spam your audience essentially mm -hmm. when you get in the podcast awards. And don't get me wrong, I don't. It's I'm not saying you shouldn't try to get a podcast award. I'm just saying it's a bit of a pet peeve. And so, but that video that Daniel is mentioning, check that out because. Um, it will improve your podcast because the qualifications that it takes to get into the podcast awards are just basic things you should be doing as a podcaster. In fact, invoke a lot of these pet peeves if you're not doing them. So that'll really help your show even if you're not going for a podcast award. But if, if you are, I hope you get in your votes and uh, go out and vote everybody. We already, uh, we already had our, bi our, our big vote. Now we've got our other votes and a lot of voting going on, but uh, you know, it's part of the process. And, uh, you know, interesting tip about Corey. He told me that his, uh, uh, him and his wife, this was a date for them. They were being ultra geeky in podcasters roundtable. So all of us, 
to all of you, or to you too, I was going to light some candles and make it really nice, but it felt <laughs> wow. weird. You know? That would so, be weird. It would be weird. All right. We like to get weird here. We get weird. Uh, all right. Jason. Um, well, it looks like we're going with two. So uh, my first one is uh, don't call audio on a website a podcast. I think this comes from that you tend to hear it, see this more in corporate or me and my background in journalism. Uh, uh, most recently, uh, places that I've worked where they want a podcast up, and I'm doing air quotes, by the way, I, uh, referencing <laughs> video. Uh, but yes, uh, where they call it a podcast, but it's not RSS fed. It's just they want audio on or video on their website that drives me nuts um, right there that is a huge pet peeve and I think that part just comes down to making sure that we educate people on what a podcast really is and I think you guys talked about this if I remember in the last uh, podcasters roundtable or maybe two ago uh, and then my other one is put names to your podcast don't just number them please mm. awesome succinct we like it that, that plays in speed round. Martine. Uh, a possible solution, actually, to a pet peeve that we mentioned earlier, which is verbal fillers. You know, your ums, your ahs, your whatever you say to fill the time and space when you're recording. Um, um, she said. <laughs> <laughs> I had a cracker. I, I basically said so at the beginning of every section that I recorded. And the way I'm, I became aware of it, because I got a, a trusted friend who consumes podcasts a lot to listen and give me some honest feedback. And, and he said, I love it. It sounds great. But you say so a lot, <laughs> a lot, a lot, a lot. And I became really aware of it. And I just think getting some honest feedback from a trusted person who has some experience of listening to shows, um, you know, it's, it's a good idea to deal with those verbal fillers because sometimes you just, if you're listening to a show and there is a so or whatever it is, you kind of tune into it and it's all you can hear. Um, so yeah, that would, that's just a suggestion rather than a peeve. Yeah, cool. No, I mean, Absolutely. it can be a, a pet peeve if, if, you know, you're hearing nothing but ums and ahs. And another good tip is to just slow down. Yes. Um, it, it can get annoying maybe in the beginning when you're learning, uh, but probably less annoying than all the ums and ahs. And really, those are fillers because you don't know what you're going to say next. So slow down, have some nice pregnant pauses if you need it, and it'll help a lot. I had to slow myself down, uh, and I'm still working not in public speaking. We're good on podcasting, public speaking, still, you know, they're <laughs> drilling pumps, right? So we turn on the mic, we hit that record button, and it's flashing red, okay? So we just tend to get a little ahead of ourselves. So go ahead and slow down. So that, that's a good one. And uh, Nick? Uh, one of my pet peeves is uh, podcasters that don't know how to do a proper mix minus. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, when people, and this comes back to the education that uh, Jason mentioned a minute ago. When people say they can't listen to your podcast because they don't have an iPod. Oh, I, I can't stand hearing that. It, we, it just means we need to do a better job educating people out there. Cool. Well, that's plenty of pet peeves. I don't need to complain or, or whine anymore. Hopefully this didn't come off as whiny. I don't think so. We come up with some constructive criticism about uh, different podcasts and things we've seen and stuff. We've even done our own show. Hopefully we've got some solution. We definitely got some free resources. And uh, so we're just going to go uh, back down the line reverse because I'm tricky like that. And, uh, and, and say good night and, and thank you for coming on the show and go ahead and let us know where we can find your content, you know, a simple website plug and, and we will let the fine audience go about their way. And so backing it up in reverse order, starting with who we just finished with, uh, Nick, tell us uh, where we can find your stuff and thanks definitely for coming on. Well, thanks for having me. It was great talking with other podcasters. Uh, you can check me out at spnt.tv. I'm a host of five different podcasts, including Who Day Weekly, which is a finalist in the podcast awards. <laughs> Please vote for us in the sports category. There's your spam. Nice, nice. No, not spammy at all. Definitely go out and uh, and check that out. And, and Nick's uh, joke about the mix minus is we were getting late. You know, we're doing a panel here with seven people, right? This is the first one, and I think it's worked quite well. Um, so, you're going to have technical difficulties. Just tell your audience what's going on. You know, we put in the chat room, we'll be with you in a minute. And I think it worked out great. And, and Nick, the audio sounds fantastic. So go ahead and check that out. And a big special thanks to Martine. What time is it where you're at, Martine? Oh, it's uh, 3.11 in the oh. morning. 10 past three. Wow. <laughs> Come on. That is, that is some dedication. So we appreciate that. Uh, you get to, I will send you your, your sticker for being the honorary, uh, kicking off the the women's movement here on Podcasters Roundtable. We need more of that. And uh, let us know where we can find all your content. 
Okay, uh, well, firstly, I've really enjoyed being on the round table uh, this morning, so thank you very much. And if you want to find I Make Guernsey's creative lifestyle blog and podcast, uh, come to www.imake.gg and all my social network links and things are there as well. Awesome. So again, thank you so much and uh, look forward to having you back on another panel. Jason, thank you, sir. Hey, thank you, Ray, for having me on. Thank everyone else. Uh, this was an awesome discussion. Uh, yeah, check me out. Uh, head on over to creepercast.com uh, where you can listen to our Creepercast podcast, our Walking Dead Week in Review, and uh, read some film reviews over there, plus interviews with uh, actors and directors in the horror genre. Very cool. So. Look forward to it. And I've checked it out before and it's cool stuff. Uh, Daniel J, you know, special thanks. Obviously, Daniel usually gives me a nice uh, swift kick in the backside, asking me when the next podcaster's roundtable is. And so that's, uh, I appreciate that push. And uh, probably someone's pet peeve is not being regular enough uh, coming out with episodes, but uh, yeah, we do when we can and hopefully you guys enjoy them. So Daniel, thank you uh, for coming on the show once again. And where can we find your stuff? Uh, I'm Daniel J. Lewis. You can find my podcast about podcasting at theaudacitypodcast.com and all the other podcasts I do over at noodle.mx. And three of them are also podcast awards finalists. So I'd really appreciate some votes, especially if I could say one, if you can only vote for one of mine, vote for one's podcast under, under the entertainment category. Awesome. So if you're hearing this way past the podcast awards, maybe it'll be nominated again, but uh, check out the show. You might really enjoy it. All right. So uh, Daniel Clark, I know that uh, you have great information to offer a lot of people who will be watching this, uh, which are people who also produce podcasts or consume podcasts about podcasting. Uh, some great articles I think you write for Blog World. And so it's great to meet you in person. Thanks for coming on and let us know where you can find your all that good information. Well, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, I do write for Blog World. Uh, there's going to be something coming out from Blog World from me soon. That's a little bit more than, than just an article, actually, but I can't talk about it yet. Nice. Uh, before I continue, Richard Cleveland in the chat room says he hates the term podcast. He prefers internet broadcast. <laughs> Yikes, let's so not go down there. Ah. <laughs> so do I. We can talk about that on another episode, perhaps. But, uh -huh. uh, yeah, Daniel M. Clark... Uh, I've got two shows right now at QAQN.com. I got a third coming in January and possibly a fourth coming right after that. So that's where awesome. I am. Awesome. Thanks for coming on the show. And just based on the reaction from what you said, from Richard, <laughs> that we definitely need to talk about that because I saw yeah. a lot of, oh, that was physical reaction. That's the kind of stuff we want on <laughs> yep. Podcasters Roundtable. We want something that just gets you right there and you want to discuss. And I, I guarantee you, that is uh, very subjective, and we got a lot of different opinions. I think on one of my Blog World articles was about that, now that I think about it. Uh -huh. And months, I, months, guess I, months say, I guess I should say NMX, right? Yeah, yeah. NMX. That's right. That's right. So, yeah. Not to get it completely inaccurate, but... The uh, artist formerly known as Blog World. There you go, there you go. <laughs> All right, and a wrap-up, uh, Corey. Uh, go ahead and let us know where you can find your stuff. Thanks for coming on the show. I had you yeah. listed here because you reached out uh, and said you were interested in being on the show, so I'm glad yeah, we got you in here. Thank you for having me on, being such a podcast noob, and I'm still doing things incredibly wrong and learning as I go. As a matter of fact, my website is still endcredits.podbean.com, as I have not set up my own domain properly yet. But uh, we are the show <laughs> for behind-the-scenes <laughs> chats with writers, directors, and composers, artists, everything. We're the show. Nice. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, again, thanks, everyone. And, of course, thanks to the chat room. Sorry that uh, I couldn't get all of the pet peeves in. The conversation has been awesome. I see a lot of stuff going on that I will get to go and browse through some more. Uh, you can find more of this show, podcastersroundtable.com. The little G plus dot two slash Ray Ortega there will take you to the uh, Podcasters Roundtable on Google Plus where you will get notified to all the live events. Um, again, I'll know you're there. Let me know if you're interested in being on a future episode and let me know what that topic uh, that you'd like to debate, all right? Now, we don't want to just instruct. We want to debate. So come up with something nice and, and meaty and controversial. And uh, <clears throat> I'm Ray Ortega. I do the podcasterstudio.com as well. So check that out. And uh, we will see you next time. So again, thanks everyone. And until next time, good night and good morning, Martin. <laughs>